Hi guys, can I get sound test? Good evening, or oh, good night if you're here with me in Berlin. Yeah, sounds good? Perfect, great. So let's start. Okay, uh, thank you Scott. Let's talk about anticipation. Actually, I want to talk today about, uh, in fact, it's a bit of an art of trading. This is just a one small part of the art of trading, anticipation, or actually anticipating the next trade or anticipating the trade. Anticipating is probably the most important part in trading, in the artistic part of trading, and that's something that you can't do without. Now, what do I mean? Well, first, I want to go and talk a little bit about your trading account. I want to talk about uh, your results, your annual results. I want to talk about um, the end of the year results. And I have a suggestion. If you'll go back, and that depends, of course, on when you are. Let's assume you're losing money. And, um, you know, 90% of the traders lose money until they become successful traders. And then when you are very successful traders, you're probably not here in this room right now with me. So let me assume that uh, most people are still struggling and still looking for a way um, to make money. And the question that um, comes to my mind, and actually I know the answer is, uh, is what's the difference between you being a successful trader or you having an end of the year red results? Well, I tell you what is the difference. The difference is anywhere between one to three cents. That's it. One to three cents. And when I say one to three cents, I mean, if you will add to every trade you took since the beginning of the year, let's see, let's say we talk about 2017. Let's say we talk about the last month, doesn't matter. If you'll add three cents to every trade, anywhere between one to three cents, with some with you, the better traders, that would be one cent. With those who are just starting, that would probably be more. So if you add anywhere between one to three cents to your trades, that would be the difference between having a green ear and a red ear. So simple. So anticipation is something that you all need to learn, you all need to practice. The problem with new traders is that um, they want a proof. For example, if we take a trade, if we look for something that uh, we think is about to happen to a stock that we like to trade, doesn't matter if we go long or we go short, um, I would anticipate the next move of the stock that I am trading. However, a novice trader may take a look at a stock uh, that looks something like that. And let's say we're talking about a stock that is uptrending and then we have a nice technical formation. And then let's say it goes over the highs and we were looking to buy it right over here uh, at the breakout point. So if we were to buy it here at the breakout point, uh, we would actually uh, do the wrong thing. We would do the wrong thing because what I'm trying to suggest here that we should anticipate the move that takes it over the highs. A novice trader wouldn't even actually buy it over the highs. So we, we, we certainly know that we should buy it over the highs because then we have a nice technical formation and we want to go long. However, a novice trader would look at it and will say, well, it's just one cent over the highs. Would I risk my money here or should I wait a little bit more? You know what? It will the person will talk to the stock. It will, he will say something like, oh, well, you know, I want to see you moving up, like prove to me. Uh, please prove to me that you really want to move up. Okay, so let's move up by one cent or two cents. You, you just go another one or two cents and I promise I'm going to join you. Just prove to me that you really are breaking over. So he will delay his entry by one or two or three cents just because he doesn't trust his instincts. And then he may click the button when it's up by two or three cents. Sometimes we'll wait a little bit more and he may have a great winner. He may have a great winner. 
So the stock moved up by, I don't know, 30 cents. He had a partial here. He enjoyed this trade. He didn't make as much as I did because maybe I did the whole 30 cents. And uh, this guy who's new to trading just had 27 cents. He's still very, very happy person, right? But, you know, if a uh, stock goes wrong, I would probably move out at my stop. And he would probably move out a few cents below, if at all. Because, and that is because, well, it comes down. I know where I'm supposed to live. He knows where he's supposed to live. But he's kind of begging the stock. Okay, please, please don't, um, please don't, uh, please don't continue. Please, I'll, I'll, I'll stay with you for another more cents. Okay, so you're down just five or ten cents now. Please come back. Um, and then it comes a little bit more and then he would make the worst mistake ever and he'll double down whatever he bought hoping it's going to go up but it actually comes down a little bit more and then he says well I promise you I'm going to stop smoking if you just go and do that or something like that whatever he will beg the stock to come up he'll usually lose more than I do he will probably gain less than I do and I'm ta again I'm talking about three cents trade now just to make things clear I'm not talking about three cents moving in three cents moving out which is six cents a trade I'm talking about an average of one and a half cent moving in and an average of one and a half cent moving out which takes it to a total of three cents per trade if you will add three cents per trade and if you're not doing good, if your last year was a red year or last month was a red month and you'll just add three cents per trade, I bet you the difference is going to be between red and green. Check it. Just go to your account. Add to each trade three cents and see how much money it counts to the end of the month. So I'm talking about anticipation. Anticipating the next move. That's what this that's what the topic of this lesson is all about and i'm expecting you to start treating the stocks like human beings now why is that first and for all you need to understand that on the other side there is actually a human being a human being so if you're trading a stock and you are buying or selling it you are trading against a person now there's millions of person out there or hundreds of thousands or thousands in a, in a specific stock that you're trading there may be thousands of people out there on the other side we cannot treat them as thousands of people we need to treat them as one person just one person so always think it's me and him or her so always there's another person on the other side and it every point you need to anticipate the next move now it doesn't really matter where you anticipate you can anticipate the next move playing football you can anticipate anticipate the next move playing basketball you need to anticipate the next move just like in sports in trading because there's persons on the other side and you know what you can anticipate a person you know what's going to do now if I go back to the whiteboard let me just clear that out if I go back to the whiteboard and I'm going to paint a stock again going up and let's say you have a nice technical formation to go long here going long over the highs which is right over here that's not anticipation that's not anticipation that is something that every excuse me for saying idiot who read a technical analysis book can do because it says so in every technical analysis book you should go long over the highs or if you are looking for a short you look for a nice uh, uh, breakdown formation maybe you have it maybe you don't and then you short it under the laws every idiot can do that we don't need you to do that any computer can do that better than you faster than you nicer than you without any proof to me that you can go down another two cents or anything like that every computer can do that but computers cannot make money trading and that is a fact in my opinion well i haven't seen anybody making money other than you know high frequency trading using uh, this or that system investing millions of dollars in some ways that are faster than we do but if you try and set up a computer to do stuff like that you're not going to make money you are you're actually not going to make money so again you need to anticipate the move can we actually move here or can we short the stock here well yes we can 
Always? No. We need to look for signs where we can or where we can't. For example, if I want to go long this stock and this breakout point is a whole number $50 or whatever it is, if that's $50 whole number, you all know you're not supposed to go long before it moves the center of 50. Why? Because whole numbers, they have sellers, and when there's sellers at whole numbers, you must buy over 50. So when you have a whole number, you don't anticipate anything. You just go long a cent over the whole number. Okay, just um, to make sure. I encourage you guys, if you like, just write questions. But if you have a question, please use the Q mark. Okay, so that I can see that is a question. Other than that, just chat. Chat is fine. Just say whatever you like to, to say. But if you want to ask me a question, I'll pause every once in a while and I'll answer that. I don't know exactly when, but I'll answer. Just use the Q mark so I can see it's a question. Okay, so let's go back to the slides. Again, I'm talking about anticipating, anticipating the next move. And I want to show you an example, a uh, bad example. Sorry. Anticipating the next move. Okay, we've got Apple here. Now, I would like you to look at the chart here and actually anticipate the next move. Now, what do you think is about to happen uh, to Apple? what will be the next move? Will it move up or will it move down? And I would like you to write down your answer over here. There's your chance to write your answer. Will it move up or will it move down? I'm talking about anticip anticipating the next move. In order to anticipate the next move, you can do plenty of things. You can look at the level two. We don't have that here. You can look at the volume. You do have the volume here. Uh, you can look at, uh, I'm not saying it says anything, you can look at um, the S&P 500. We don't have that here. So the only thing we can rely on right now is the chart and the volume. So it says, uh, okay, so we've got exactly right now 50-50, <laughs> just moved to 52-47. Well, let me just say that uh, very simply. Uh, approximately half of you, and this is the this is actually the the answer I was hoping to see. Uh, half of you think that stock is going to move up. Half of you guys think that stock is going to move down. Well, almost half. So let's stop it here. And um, and then okay. So what is Apple is going to do? Uh, we came to a conclusion. You came to the conclusion, uh, which I agree with. Which I agree with that. It's very, very hard to predict Apple. Some of you thought, well, maybe it's going to go up. Some of you thought, well, maybe it's going to come down. We don't really know. Uh, maybe you best your uh, answer upon the volume, upon yesterday's move or whatever. But it's very, very hard to say. Well, let's go to the next slide. Here's the next slide. And I would like now to ask you the question, what would you anticipate the next move of Apple? So will Apple move up or move down based on what you're seeing now? Now, what would be your answer? Overwhelming. Not overwhelming anymore. Still overwhelming. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have 90% uh, saying it's going to come down and we have uh, 1188 now saying it's going to come, 11 says it's going to go up, 88% says it's going to come down. Okay, good. So, uh, fine. Uh, well, I when I look at the chart, I, I, I have to agree with 90% of the people who just mentioned that. Uh, it's probably going to come down. Yes, I think so. I think based on what I see here, it's probably going to come down. And, I, and again, I did not see the level two and I did not see uh, the S&P. I didn't see anything. I do see this trend candle and I do see the volume growing. You see the volume growing here? So that's another sign too. So I'm watching the chart and the chart kind of talked to me and says, Apple's probably going to come down. So the next question is, where do we short it? I mean, would we short it under the lows? right over here, or if we believe by 90% that it's going to come down, 
should we short it right now? That's anticipation. That is anticipation. So I'm trying to suggest here that if you see a stock behaving that way, you can definitely consider shorting it here. Now, in the case of Apple, it's much more than three cents, okay? It's much more than three cents. I don't know exactly how many, but it's much more than three cents. What I'm suggesting here is that in case you decided for some reason you want to short Apple, maybe the market's coming down, maybe you look at the daily, maybe uh, you look at the level two, maybe you have a few more tools to make your decision upon. Uh, you take a look at that, you come to the conclusion that you have 90% chance that it's going to come down, that's the time to short it. Why? Because it's 90% chance it's going to come down. That's it. That's the time to short it. So it's not waiting until it breaks down under the lows because the breakdown formation, that's something that everybody can do. That is something that is written in every book. And you know what? The books are wrong. If somebody tells you in a technical analysis book short under the laws, the book is wrong. Or actually, the person who wrote the book is wrong. Or let me say it in a different way. He's not a successful trader. Or if he, he may be a good educator, but he's not a profitable trader. Okay? So, shorting a stock under the laws is possible. You can do that. But in the total balance of trading, taking trades to the long side, long, trading short, uh, making a profit um, when it goes up, making a profit when it comes down, losing money on trades that doesn't work out so good. It is hard to survive trading. So if you just do everything that is according to the book, it is hard to survive trading. You need the artistic ta chart. Ah, sorry, it's artistic chart. <laughs> Come on, Anti artistic touch. I wanted to say touch somehow. I don't know. You need a touch, the artistic touch. The artistic touch is, 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 is very, very much important in any trade that you take. Now, the artistic touch can only be, in my opinion, activated, be activated when you have a chance of 80% or more. You know what? We should do something like that in the trading room. Like, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to present this poll for you. And I'm going to ask you, what do you guys think uh, is going to happen next? I mean, do we have an 80% or more chance? And let's go in when, it, when, when, you, think it, when, when you think we do. M maybe we'll do that. I, I don't, maybe a good idea. Well, um, yeah, Apple did come down. Yes, that's a perfect formation for a breakdown. But that formation of breakdown is something that novice traders should take. You should actually take it before. Well, not in every case. And I haven't seen Apple's... Um, I haven't seen Apple's um, um, uh, bid and ask uh, level 2. I, 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 I don't know what happened in the market at that time. Actually, I do, but it doesn't matter. You could definitely... Definitely consider taking Apple short before it breaks down under the lows. So whoever took it once it broke down under the lows had a great trade. But in the balance of adding trades where you make a great short in Apple and the next one is a loser and then the next one is a winner and then the next one is a loser. In this balance, again, when you sometimes lose a little bit more than you gain, you may end up read at the end of the month or you pay commissions and of course everything so I again I'm suggesting that if you will do it right if you'll come to the point where you'll click that button at the point of 80% at the point of 80% you can actually move from red to green you can there's a question will it uh, be a buy if the last candle went the other way I mean instead of down mm, good point that I, I you know what I, I can't answer that I can't answer that Mike and the reason why I can't answer that is because if I had this I would put a poll here in the room and I would ask everybody here what do you think there's a green candle instead of a red candle and there's the green candle and what do you think would it be a buy you need to imagine what do you think? Would it be a buy? 
Well, you need to think like us. You need to think like the majority. That is something that is being developed. It's not something that comes to you overnight. If you're new to trading, it, it just won't come to you. Then sometimes you need to hear me, you need to listen to me, you need to listen to other people in the training room, you need to follow us if you need to. But I cannot say right now what I think may have happened. I need to imagine it. I can actually give you an answer, but you know, it has to do, yes, it has to do with trend, it has to do with the market, it has to do. And again, we can add more and more ingredients into this. What about this one? What about Facebook? What is it going to do next? What do you think? Here's the poll. Soon, coming. What is it going to do next? We've got approximately 65, 60%, 60, 40, 60, 40. Okay, so we've got 60, 40, um, 60, 40 saying uh, um, Facebook's going to come down. I can, I can understand that. Um, it's downtrending. It was downtrending yesterday. It's downtrending. Uh, move down, pull back up, consolidating, very likely to continue with the trend, I agree, I agree. Uh, would you short it? My answer is, at that point, absolutely not. And why? Did we get 80%? We didn't have the consensus of 80%, right? So we got only 60%. 60% of you guys said, it's going to come down. Is it good enough? No, it's not good enough. Well, you can short Facebook under the laws. Surely you can, if it comes down. Then I guess I would get more than 80% say that it's probably going to continue. But I'm asking about this point right now. And this point right now, that's a 60-40. So if you look at the stock and it tells you that's 60-40. Actually, the stock talks to you back. You know, you know, I, I, I joke about this every once in a while. But in every once in a while, when I'm talking about something like this in the training room, I'm, I'm suggesting that you should ask the stock what it's going to do next. Really, when I talk about ask the stock, it's not really... Um, you're not going to get an answer from the stock. You're going to get an answer from... You're actually going to get an answer from yourself trying to figure out what the person on the other side is going to do. So what the person on the other side is going to do, this one person, we're talking about a thousand traders, but it's just one person. So you ask him, you ask the stalker, you ask this person, what do you want to do? Are you going to go up or are you going to go down? You're not going to get an answer. But you try and imagine the answer. You look at the stock and it tells you, hmm, I, I really haven't made up my mind yet. I don't know. I'm, I mean, maybe. Maybe up, maybe down. No decision. I, I mean, yeah, the trend is down and so on, but mm, no, not, I, I don't really have a decision right now. I, I don't know what to do. So if it tells you I don't know what to do, just there's nothing to do there. And again, we get an answer of 60-40 now. The answer of 60-40 makes no decision. Again, over 80, that would have been something else. How about now? How about now? Uh, let me put up the poll, okay? Up or down? What do you think? Will Facebook decide to move up or down? You can look at uh, several things, like uh, volume, for example. Um, chart, of course, your opinion. Uh, whole number, Steve, is not exactly the same idea. Not exactly the same idea. This is, yes, you of course, you everything in training is anticipation, but I'm trying to talk about something that doesn't look so clear. Uh, 
Okay, so we have 62% saying it's going to go up, 37% says it's going to go down. Fine, let's just say no decision for several reasons. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure you guys uh, saw whatever I saw, like the volume, it moves up, but the volume is declining, so there's not much interest in the stock uh, moving up. Uh, what about now? What do you think now? Uh, let me put up the poll again. What do you think Facebook's going to do now? Will it come up or down? When I say up or down, I mean, will it come down under the lows? It's it's not yet under the lows. It's absolutely not yet under the lows. Do you think there's a good chance for it to come under the lows? Okay, so now we have 83% saying yes, it will, and 16% saying uh, it won't. Okay, so we've got a trade. We've got a trade. And guys, we've got a trade here. And the idea is um, it did not break down under the lows. It did not break down under the lows, not yet. But at that point, if you believe, if you believe that the stock has more than 80% chance to move down under the lows, then yes, we have a trade. We can definitely short it at that point because we expect it to come under the lows. So that's the idea of anticipation. And that's the result. It really did come down under the lows. But again, should you anticipate that and move before or should you just wait down for the breakdown? Wait for the breakdown. My suggestion is definitely, definitely make the decision before it breaks down. Anticipate the move. There's a long trade. What do you think about this one? Will it move over the highs? Here's the question coming up now. What do you think? Are we going to see it over the highs or not? Looks like a close call. We've got 70% saying it will. We've got 29% uh, saying it won't. Okay, interesting. Uh, 71, but we don't have 80%. So we don't have 80% saying uh, it's going to move over the highs. Okay. Uh, if I would have added a few more cents, let's say you see this mark over here. Okay. The highs is over this mark. Okay. Let's say I would have added a few more cents to this green candle here, which didn't happen in, in reality, of course. But let's say I would have added a few more cents to this green candle. So would then I move over 80%? Where, where would be the point where I would move over 80%? Now, maybe here, before the highs, okay? That's that's the highs over here. So would it actually happen here if this candle was, green candle was a little bit higher? I guess if I would have moved up by a few more cents and maybe instead of getting 71%, I would actually get 80%. So that would be the entry point. So you see where I'm going? I'm going to the point where you will take a look at this trade and you will say, yes, at that point, I think it will go over the highs. That's what happened, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm showing you all examples that uh, from trades that uh, actually happened today. So would that be here, uh, the breakout point? Would that be the right entry point? Would you move in here or would you move approximately 20 cents before that, which is here? In my opinion, you could earn another 20 cents easily. Now, that's 80% chance that it's going to move over the highs. Just 80%. That still means that you're taking a risk. You're taking a bigger risk. But when you come to the point where you think that it is very, very likely that it will move over the highs, go in. Now, if you give me 80% chance on, I don't know, in anything, I'll take it. I'll take it. So that is actually anticipating the next move of 
BID in this case. So, um, any questions about that? And just to summarize what we learned today, that's not uh, my idea. Anticipation is not my idea. Anticipation, uh, actually, that's uh, started with John Maynard Keynes many, many years ago. Can't remember when this guy lived in the 1800s something. Okay, so that's something he said. Successful investing is anticipation of the anticipations of others. So the anticipation of others is that it's going to break out over the highs. And once it does that, it's probably going to continue to the next target. And probably you have got yourself a nice trade. Break out over the highs, that's the anticipation of others. You need to anticipate their anticipation. You need to come in first. You need to be the first one to move into a trade. One more question. Does that apply also to a stop? Should you anticipate the place, the point where you should put your stop? Meaning if the stock is coming down to the technical point of your stop, should you actually move out before it reached your technical point of stop? The answer is yes. So I'm not talking only about the entry point, I'm certainly talking about the exit point too. You can apply this also to your first target. You can apply this to everything. And I'm just talking about an average of three cents per trade. If you'll add three cents per trade, that is one and a half cent coming in, one and a half cent coming out, huge difference huge difference between being green or red huge difference so you cannot always apply it because sometimes you take a look at the stock and it will look like um, well it has to come over the highs like the example I gave you earlier about the whole number or you will take a look at the stock and you say well it's not that clear because the market is going the wrong way stock may be coming down maybe breaking down it looks great but the market is now moving up so not clear enough. So you actually don't have the 80% at that point. That's it. So you cannot apply it in each and every trade, but in this trade that you can apply it, you'll probably get more than three cents. And the average would be three cents because there are some trades you can't apply it. I'm just encouraging you to have another three cents. Three cents sometimes is a lot of money. A lot of money. Okay, time for questions and answers. Is it applied to reversal? Absolutely, Fabio. Look at any reversal that you want and imagine. Okay, that's the right place to go long. That's the right place to go short in a reversal. Can I anticipate that it will get to the place where it is right to go long or right to go short? Can you anticipate that? Absolutely. It's, it's right for everything. It is right for everything. How about case of uh, PDCO this morning? Can't remember. Let's see. PDCO. So you're talking about this area over here? I don't know. You know, w one of the things that uh, you need to understand it when we look at uh, when we look uh, at a stock, when we look at the behavior of a stock. Now it's very very hard to predict it. For example, you're probably talking about this point here, right? Can we predict PDCO coming down under the lows? Should we short it? Let's say here. And then, of course, we would have a loser because it went, it moved up. So you need to take a look at that point. And I can definitely say by the chart, it looks like yes, kind of yes. Is it 80%? I'm not sure. You also need to take a look at uh, what the S&P was doing at uh, approximately 10, 5 minutes after 10 o'clock. And I don't know what the S&P does. Actually, I can take a look at that. Hold on. I can take a look at that. Let me put up the S&P here. Sure, I can. 
here it is, 10 o'clock. So 10 o'clock, certainly moving up. So the S&P was moving up. So maybe if you put in together the S&P at 10 o'clock and um, PDCO at 10 o'clock, then the answer is we don't have 80%. So again, it's very, very hard. If I take a look at it right now, it's kind of impossible to know if I had the 80% or not. Uh, what was the level 2 data showing? The volume at that time, markets doing this and that. Kind of hard. Uh, I see I have more questions there. Uh, do you look at uh, previous day where the stock went down? Or yes, absolutely. Anticipate the next time. Uh, how do you anticipate? Of course. Listen, Blazon. Uh, one of the decision making in any trade I take is taking a look at the daily. Absolutely. Now, what happened yesterday with PDCO? Well, I mean, generally speaking, stock is trending lower, broke down under this low. So yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what happened in the daily too, and what happened yesterday, and what happened to the market yesterday. Everything is important. Round numbers uh, is different. Round numbers are very like a uh, black and white decision. Yes, absolutely. Chat, absolutely. Uh, George has a question. Uh, if we both say 10 cents before the resistance, before the resistance, okay. Oh, good point. Okay, so you anticipated the move. That's what you're saying, George. You anticipated the move, but you find out that, well, it fails. It fails then you need to anticipate the next move. So th the answer is, I don't have an answer. You need to take, well, I do, but it's not clear. The stock came, let's say it came down. You anticipated it to break down under lows. 10 cents before it really was supposed to break down under lows. It did not. It bounced. How far did it bounce? Like 5 cents, I would still hold. 6, 7 cents, hmm, yeah. Uh, if I'm going to be down like two or three cents, I may move out at a small loss because it didn't do what I expected it to do, but I had some cushion. Uh, the 10 cent was a cushion. So I, 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 had, I had something I could play with. Uh, if it goes up by 20 cents, maybe I should move out very, click, very quickly. But what's the market doing? So I don't have a clear-cut answer for you, but uh, the answer is you've got these 10 cents, play with them. Maybe move out at small profit, maybe move out at small loss. That's probably the right answer, but needs to be checked according to each and every case. Okay, Andrew, uh, if you anticipate the breakout and wrong, it's almost a dollar down to support. Uh, would it make more sense in this case to join? No. No. If it didn't break out, went all the way one dollar to the support and well, take a look at it once it comes down. I, I mean, it's hard. When when the stock was supposed to break out and it did not break out and then it came back down, let's say, as you mentioned, one dollar. Look at the stock. Try and see. I mean, do you think it's going to move up? Yes. Okay, so let's go long. Do you have 80% chance it's going to move up or it's just like, hmm, 60%? I'm talking about 80%. If you got yourself an 80% chance you need to know what is i mean you need to figure out if you do have we try and do that in the trading room actually then move in uh, initiate if the market uh, trend crucial would it be beneficial for beginners like myself to solely focus on trying to take oh absolutely not oh my goodness never do that you do not trade the s p you do not do that. Don't trade the S&P. Uh, the S&P helps you to trade stocks. Helps you to trade stocks. It's crucial that you don't trade the S&P. Uh, 
the S&P is almost impossible to trade. I mean, some traders try and trade it uh, with futures, with whatever. There are some very certain points where you can trade the S&P, where you anticipate a breakdown, a breakout. When you anticipate a big move in the S&P, yes, it's much harder to trade in the S&P. The S&P is a combination of 500 different stocks. You're supposed to be trading a stock, one stock, because the, the, the fear factor or the greed factor works better on just one stock. If you put it on in 500, it doesn't come out the same as just trading one. Uh, wait a minute, may do you decide on your exact entry? The first few minutes of the open. Never decide on my entry the first few minutes. I mean, I, I do decide, but I, I don't make a decision then and then I do it later, if that's your question. Do you short the low previous candle? No, I don't look at again. What I just mentioned here, I mean, is that don't look at things technically. You know, you, your question is, do you short the low of the previous candle? That's a wrong question. Okay, that's a wrong question. You don't ask this question. The question is, what does the stock tell you it wants to do? Look at the chart. I don't care what kind of candle you had before the candle you shorted. Look at the chart. Does it look to you like it's just about to break down under the laws or not? Who cares about the next, the previous candle? The previous candle is something you put into a machine. It's something you program into a computer. And I said earlier, that's not something to work with. Can you please show again how to figure out if the stock may go up or down? Um, just one thing, Basin. Just one thing. Oh, I didn't understand. I may have not understood your question. Look at the chart. Once you look at the chart, you need to figure out where if it's going to go up or down. That's a tricky part. You need some experience. A lot of experience sometimes. Sometimes you got the answer. Sometimes the answer is very, very clear. If you're not sure about the answer, if you're not sure it's 70% or 80%, don't trade it. Sit on the fence. Why should you? Uh, chat, do you anticipate uh, move at semi-round number or is it black and white or so? Uh, it gets to be it gets to be a little bit more anticipate anticipation chat. Yeah, uh, semi semi-round numbers are not as good as whole numbers. Therefore, you can activate more anticipation ingredient into that. But if you don't have anything that is in your favor something that you can anticipate with, use the semi-whole numbers. They're good for that. Uh, Matt, when you're trying to anticipate movements, are you watching the stock minute chart, daily chart, anything that helps you, weekly chart, all at once, oh, it's looking basic, anything you can use, any tool you can use, Matt, you, you can use the chart, whatever candles work for you, you can use other things like volume, anything that makes you make a decision. I usually move to the daily and certainly, certainly look in the intraday. And um, and sometimes, and of course, everything else, everything that is in the market too. Yeah, yeah, Gabriel, we should, we should, we should do that to the S&P too. How much did it take me to develop the anticipation, Jeremy? Um, I think I was really good at that after six years. There's a time for every trader. Uh, really, there is. No joking. There's a time for every trader when he wakes up in the morning, looks at the mirror and says to himself, and <clears throat> I know what's going on. There is a time like that. Um, it happened to a lot of professional traders that I know that it's kind of came up to them at one time of their life, usually after quite a few years of training, when they really looked at the mirror in the morning and said, wow, I do really understand what's going on now. I mean, I, 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 I got the hang of it. I understand it. I, or as I call it sometimes, I see the matrix. I see the matrix behind the candles. What I was, I, I was really talking to you today about the matrix behind the candles. I was talking today, I'm just 
a reminder, we started talking about this today, I mentioned the artistic part of trading. That's the artistic part of trading. Now, I'm not sure some of you can activate this artistic ingredient right now. But if you know that you need to, that's the time to start thinking about it. So if you're new to trading, that's the time where you start thinking about the artistic part of trading and try to develop it. And if you're not good at that, you'll get better in months or years from now. You will get better. But you need to know that it is there. You need to know that it is there. If you know that it is there, you've got it. Don't be black and white. Um, it will be great. Uh, okay, more questions. If you can teach one day, reading price section purely with twin support resistance, no indicators. Uh, tell you what, uh, George. Tell you what. Um, I I think the best tool. To, to try and understand what I think about the markets to just, you know, it, whenever it comes, it comes during the trading day. It's very, very hard to talk about it afterwards. You, you need to take a look at what happens now and then figure out what's coming next. So I do that every day I'm talking about. Maybe I should talk more about it, but it's very, very hard to teach about that. There's no, again, clear rules about that. <coughs> Mm, yes, absolutely, Matt. I always leave the S&P and the Qs uh, always open, always open. Absolutely always open. Always watch both. Uh, no, Fabi, I don't record all of my trades. Certainly not. I do not used to do that. You're talking about running a book of trades, right? I mean... Um, Writing down the results, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Mike, what do you tell myself in the morning uh, when you thought you got it? <laughs> um, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out uh, if I can give you an example from something else in life. What would that be? What would that be? Can I get like another example? I don't know. It's a good feeling. Let me tell you this. It's a good feeling. You trust yourself more. Uh, you're losing for the past six months MD. <coughs> you ask if it's normal. Um, ask me after three years. That that would be kind of not normal. After six months, very normal. Guys, if you don't realize that, uh, most people lose one to two years. It takes time. That happened to me anyway. I don't know. Maybe you're better. Uh, mental stop. Uh, Denise, I use mental stops. Mental stops. My average profit loss ratio. I, 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 sixty-eight of sixty-eight percent of my trades are are, are are profitable. Daniel. What I think about cryptocurrency. It's gambling, Jeremy. I mean, if you like gambling, that's fine. If you enjoy gambling, that's fine. But there's certainly, it's certainly not trading. I mean, it's interesting. Something sometime may come out of it or not. There's a lot of things that didn't take off. This may be one of them. Or maybe it is. I don't know it. You don't know it. Nobody knows it. Don't trade it. If you like trading, concentrate on something that works for the past few hundred years, like Wall Street. Uh, don't get into things that were just recently invented. Uh, 
Uh, Revy, we will have to talk about uh, quantity of trading uh, some other time. It's uh, just over 10 p.m. here, Berlin time, and I'm, I, I'm not going to start talking about it now. You hate gambling? Actually, I love gambling, Henry. I, I, I really do, but um, I'm, 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 I, I don't, I hate taking risks. So if you, if you ever catch me gambling, that would be like with a $200 <laughs> max stop loss. Uh, Scott always jokes when, when, when we meet. I mean, we, we, we met in, 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 in Las Vegas, for example. I mean, uh, that, that's a big joke. Um, I, I don't, I hate losing. I like gambling, but I'll 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 I'll, I'll pick this the, the table with a ten dollar, uh, you know, chips, and I'll I'll play until I lose two hundred, or win two hundred, and then I'll walk away. But I think gambling is actually fun. Who doesn't like gambling? Really? Come on, Harry. Seriously, you really hate gambling, or you hate losing money in gambling? Uh, David, I, 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 I don't personally trade currencies. I, I, I'm not against it. There's some ways of doing that the right way, but it's much, much harder than stocks, and I don't see any reason why I should trade currencies. The hardest part I was struggling in the first year. Um, exiting, losing trade, emotional. What was I struggling the most with the past year, the first year? Uh, Mike, my wife. <laughs> uh, no, not really. Um, yeah, I think it was uh, the emotional part. I think it was the emotional part. <laughs> okay, guys, um, we'll finish with that. Uh, thank you very much for being here with me today. Uh, it was fun. Thank you. Uh, hope you enjoyed. And please, please, please uh, try and figure out uh, what is your small artistic part in trading. Um, yeah. Just work on this, work. Uh, know that it's there. That, that, what I would like you to take out from this presentation today is first, know that it is there because it is there and then try and figure out how you can use it. Thank you. See you next time. Actually, see you tomorrow in the trading room.